Hello everyone and welcome to today's video. Today I have this Espresso Bravo Barista Express to review for you guys. I got mine on sale for like $500. I know it is not cheap, but there are much higher priced options when it comes to a home espresso machine. But after a lot of research, I went with this one because I felt like it has the perfect combinations of like automatic and auto, but also it has the option if you want to dial in and customize your espresso. I really love it because it is like a true compact all-in-one machine. You get your grinder, your pump, nice steam wand. You also have like a hot water dispenser, nice temper, all the accessories and everything you need to make a perfect shot of espresso. So I definitely recommend this machine if you want to learn more about espresso and continuously perfect your shots but you don't want to spend thousand i believe this is a really nice machine to consider it definitely has a learning curve that might frustrate some people when they are getting started that's why in this video i'm going to guide you step by step to get you started so you can hopefully brew your perfect first shot of espresso so before we get started on this video please be sure to subscribe to my channel down below hit that thumbs up and without further ado let's Let's get started. On your hopper, make sure it clicks to lock. Alright guys, so the first thing you should do before you use your machine is installing your water filter. So this is the filter that came with my machine. You just need to soak it in water first for 5 minutes. Now rinse the filter under water, place the filter inside the filter holder, and you can set a date now 2 months ahead. Now we can go ahead and install the water filter inside of our water tank and go ahead and fill it up to the max line. Now I'm going to lock my water tank in and turn the machine off. Now the machine actually preheat pretty fast, just wait for the button to stop flashing. And now we're going to run actually, let me just remove the water filter out of the way, and we're going to run one cup cycle. So just place this one, this cup underneath this group head and we're going to run just one cup cycle to just flush out the machine make sure the pump is working properly so just press the button now i'm going to remove the cup out of the way and we're also going to run the steam for about 10 seconds The machine itself actually very beautiful and it's actually very heavy duty. It is made mostly of stainless steel. Next to your grinder, you have like a warming tray. So when you turn your machine on, always make sure you place your cups on the top here so they warm up as the machine is warming up as well. This is your water filter. It is nice and heavy too. I'm going to set it aside so I can show you the hidden storage tray that we have on the inside here. So this is really nice because you can store your extra accessories and tools out of your way nice and neat so we have like a coffee scoop razor this is like a trimming tool we'll talk more about these in just a minute let's just put them back and I want to talk about these filter baskets so we have four of these filter baskets now these are dual wall one for single and one for double shot and the dual wall means that you use these with pre-ground coffee only so i'm going to set them aside because i'm actually not going to be using these today i'm going to use these these are a single wall filter baskets and again one for single shot and one for double shot and you use these when you are grinding a fresh whole bean coffee and that's what i'm going to be using today so i'm going to take first the single wall single shot filter basket and I'm going to place it inside my water filter because we are going to be brewing one single shot of espresso. Now this is your grind size adjuster. My machine came from the factory set to number five but if you want to go finer you can go this way and it goes down to number one. If you want to go coarser you go the opposite way to number 16. This is coarse. Now, I'm going to set it back to number 5 because this is the number Bravel recommends. You probably don't need to change it, but if you need to, you can play around with it. And if you are still not happy with all these numbers, if you tried all of them and you still you want it finer or coarser, there is a second adjuster inside your grinder here. To reach to it, you need to remove this hopper. So unlock it. And we're going to remove this grinder wheel. 
Now, if you want to adjust the settings here, you have to remove this handle first. So you can just pop it out of one side and it will just come out the other side very easily. As you can see, mine came from the factory set to number six. So if you want to change this number, you can see here to go coarse, you have to go this way. So the higher the number, the coarser the ground will be and the lower the number, the finer it will be. So for me, I'm going to set it back to number six because it was working just fine for me. And I'm going to place my handle back on so I can put it back. Put your hopper back on. Now let's take a look at our buttons here. This is the power button, turns the machine on and off. And like I said, the machine really is ready in like seconds, but I highly recommend you let your machine warm up like for 10 minutes. You want everything to be nice and hot for a good quality shot of espresso. Speaking of that, I'm going to insert my portafilter here and lock it in position so it can warm up as well. This is the grind amount dial. This is how much coffee you want to fill in your portafilter. So you can adjust that for less or you can adjust it for more. Now I'm going to leave mine today at here, like three o'clock, I would say. This is, I feel like the middle, it's a good starting point, even for you, you can start here and you can adjust it later if you want it less or more. Next, we have the filter size. You have to tell the machine what filter size you are using. If you're using the single shot, you press the button so the light comes on here. And if you're using the double shot, you press it again so the light comes on here. So for me right now, I'm using single shot basket, so I'm going to leave it at single. And this is the program button. You press this button whenever you want to dial in and customize the water volume and temperature that you want. And lastly, we have these two buttons. So you have one for single shot and one for double shot. And you only press this button when you are ready to brew your shot. On the side here, you have the switch for water and steam. So the hot water comes out the spout here and the steam is for the steam one. So now I want to talk about coffee. You guys know for best shot of espresso, you really have to use fresh, high quality beans. Now for the purpose of this video, I picked up this some town brand from Target. Uh, I tried this brand before. I really like the flavor and I know the settings that work best with this brand. So I thought this is something you guys can pick up too from your local Target and you can copy my own settings if you want just very quick, good quality shot of espresso. So now I'm just going to fill my hopper with a little bit of coffee. This looks like a nice medium roast. Now you're going to find every coffee brand is different and every time you change the coffee brand, you're going to have to readjust your settings. First, I'm going to unblock my butter filter. And Bravo recommends you burst the machine before you brew a shot of espresso with just water. So I'm going to press the one cup. Now make sure your porta filter is nice and dry. Now we're going to grind our coffee. Just place it inside and give it a nice push. Now it's time to tamp your coffee. So take your tamper out. I like to first use my finger just to spread it around. Make sure everything is nice and even. And now I like to use my tamper. Give it a nice twist in the beginning, again, just to make sure everything is level. And then you can start applying pressure. You don't want too much of pressure and you don't want it too light either. Just something in between. Now I'm going to remove my tamper, set that aside and use the razor to trim off any excess coffee. Just move it back and forth. Now it is time to extract your coffee. So I'm going to place my filter filter inside the group head and lock it. Place your cup beneath it. Keep your eye on the brush or needle here. You have to be in this gray area. Always stir your crumb up right before you're going to taste it. actually very good. I was thinking that you should always keep an eye on the needle. You really want to be in that gray area. Most common problem 
that people have low pressure or high pressure if you have low pressure then your ground coffee was grounded too coarsely and if it is too high for pressure then the coffee it is too fine so you just have to adjust it and on this shot here the pressure was way too high and that is because i had too much coffee in the filter basket and also it was dripping on one side a little bit more than the other it wasn't even and that is because the tampon wasn't enough it wasn't level i had more coffee on one side than the other and you can see the machine really choked and didn't give me the full volume of one single shot now i'm going to brew a double shot of espresso and i'm going to share some more tips with you guys to just make sure i cover everything so let's go ahead and do that now I'm going to do a double shot of espresso. I already have my double shot filter basket inside my porta filter. And I'm going to show you if you don't want to use the grind amount dial and you want to do it manually, you can do that. You can fill up your porta filter manually. And the way to do that, there's a tab inside here. So push on it with your porta filter and hold it. Once you're happy with the amount of coffee you have inside, you can stop it. And now you can see, you can tamp it and see if you need more, you can also add more manually. And the way you know that you need more coffee is by this rim of the tamper. This metal rim should line up after you tamp it, it should line up with the top of the filter. So mine still needs a little bit more, so I'm going to do this manually now. All right, now I'm going to tamp that and see if this is enough. Again, just make sure everything is nice and level and you can start tamping. Now get your razor and again, just shave off the extra coffee. Like you guys saw, we had a perfect pressure. Again, to make good espresso, it is really a combination of the two, grind size and the grind amount. That's why I showed you how to grind coffee manually, so you know how much you are putting in the porta filter and you get used to it. And you know you have the perfect amount of coffee when the metal rim of the tamper line up with the top of the filter basket. You know that's the perfect amount of coffee because if you don't have enough coffee in the porta filter, you're going to have a too low pressure, and if you have too much, you're going to have a high pressure, and that's not good. So right now, for those two double shot of espresso, I think I'm gonna make americano to show you guys how to use the hot water dispenser, and you guys know. Americano, it is really personal preference. You can add as much as water as you want. I like equal parts, coffee to water. So that's what I'm going to do. But feel free to add more water if you want. This is also very good. And the hot water dispenser, it is also like useful if you want to make tea or just rinse out your porta filter and warm up your cup. It's a really nice feature to have. But now I'm actually going to make cappuccino so we can finally show you guys how you steam your milk with this espresso machine. So we have actually the jug. I'm going to bring it out and bring some milk because if you want to make cappuccino, all barista are trained to make the milk first and then pull out your shot of espresso. So let's do that first then. All right, now you see the V shape that the spout makes on the inside of your jug? Consider this your max line. So fill up your jug and until you get to the bottom of this V. You don't really want to go above it. Now before you steam your milk, you need to vent the steam wand to remove the residual water from the boiler line so you don't end up with a couple teaspoons of water inside of your milk. After 10-15 seconds, the water will start to drip out, then it will turn to steam. Let it just go on for like a few seconds, then turn it back to standby and quickly put the wand into the milk then turn back the steam. You need to do this within like eight seconds or you will have to burst the wand all over again. You want the steam wand tip to be just under the surface because you don't want it to be berry because we want to start introducing a little bit of air into the milk. So hold this position for about 20 to 30 seconds. 
Once you feel it getting warm, raise the pitcher back up and bury the steam wand to stop the introduction of air. And now tilt the jug a little bit so the milk swirls around the jug and this is going to help you get that creamy textured froth milk. And you're going to hold this position for about a few seconds until you're happy with the consistency and you also know when you see the jug gets too hot to hold and uncomfortable then you probably got to the right temperature so just turn the steam off now set the milk aside and quickly wipe it down with washcloth or something wet like paper towel or something and this is really important step because you don't want any milk to dry on your steam wand right now i'm going to brew my coffee and I'm going to split this double shot of espresso in two cups so we can have single shot in each one. Now go ahead and tap your milk jug on the counter just to get rid of any big bubbles and give it a swirl. This is how you get very nice glossy finish on your milk. Just nice and slow. It's perfection. Much better than what I used to drink. And honestly, the process is really fun. Once you get the hang of it, I just want to mention always keep an eye out for the water tank because this machine doesn't have sensor and it will run even if it doesn't have any water in it. And I can only imagine that could damage it permanently. So with that, we can leave this video, my friends. I hope you all enjoyed it. If you did, please thumbs it up, consider subscribing, and I will see you next time. Bye.